So we're here with John Masters. And um, this is the Enterprise Edition 96 boards with an AMD ARM processor. So what's That's going right. on? That's right. So what I'm holding here is uh, the first, hopefully of many, uh, 96 board um, of the Enterprise flavor, right? So there's two different kinds of 96 board. There's the Consumer Edition, and then there's the Enterprise Edition. Um, and the purpose of the the Enterprise Edition is to provide a slightly larger, um, both I guess in physical form factor, but also in uh, you know functionality, kind of a more a more enterprise server focused design. Uh, and what that means is a combination of uh, server grade hardware. So what you have here uh, on this board um, is uh, an AMD uh, Seattle A1100 uh, SoC, uh, which is an eight core. Um, ARM Cortex A57 uh, processor, um, and then you've got the ability to put um, your own memory on here, whatever configuration you want. You've got a bunch of SATA ports, you've got a couple of uh, Giggy network uh, interfaces, you've got um, USB, you've got PCI, you've got all the kinds of things that you would want um, on, on a server platform. Um, and it, it, in, in many ways, from a software perspective, it looks like the uh, you know, much more expensive um, server reference platforms that I've been working with uh, with AMD on for, for the last few years. Um, but the interesting thing here is that this is going to be more, a more affordable platform. I don't think they've uh, given precise pricing yet, but you're looking at you know, something that's affordable for uh, an end developer uh, and affordable certainly for, for, for companies. You're not paying thousands of dollars for this board, far from it. Uh, and you're going to have something that is physically this, this size. So. Um, you're there was have, a prototype mm -hmm. here at the Linar Connect. Uh, somebody was showing off a prototype, right? Yeah, they had a they had a mechanical prototype, and then the actual boards, the the, the kind of real production boards, are uh, just a uh, just a few weeks to maybe a month or two away from from starting to starting to surface. Uh, I'm hoping to have some at the the ARM TechCon uh, in uh, in November uh, and be able to show um, a little bit more of, uh, in what we're planning to do there. Um, the interesting thing from my perspective is that I got involved uh, fairly early on with the design for um, the specification uh, for the 96 boards enterprise um, series. So there's a specification, it's um, an open specification that anyone can take and use. The beautiful thing is anyone can make one of these boards. This one happens to have an AMD processor. Somebody could make a different one if they want. Uh, it's an open specification. Um, but it's been engineered from the beginning, and I got involved fairly early on in that, like in the last, in the first few days of the of the specification last year, um, and and made sure ahead of time that it would run a lot of the enterprise software that you see out there. So when you get it, you can just take um, the Red Hat um, Enterprise Linux Server for ARM development preview um, that we put out. Um, you can put it on a USB stick and you can do a live install and off you go, right? You can put a DVD drive in this and do an install. So all the kinds of things that you would expect from a real kind of, you know, server you would have today, you can just take this, plug in your media and off you go. And we've got... USB stick? Correct. Connect. Live install. Boom, off you go. Boom, yep. and it installs, it just works. That's it. That's it. And we've been doing those tasks um, since last year um, on the various, uh, if you like, prototype platforms that that, um, that fed into this design. So we've we've tested extensively doing uh, yeah USB. You could do a live USB if you wanted to. So all actually all the kinds of use cases that people have today, like on your laptop, you want to try out a new Linux release, you can get a live USB stick, put it in, and boot off it. All that stuff works on some of these emerging ARM servers. That's going to be really cool. What's part of the spec that uh, that uh, that you think is really important? Like. All the connectors are the same places, or what, what else is? Uh... Yeah, so so the standard form factor um, is very important um, that it can fit into the kind of cases that people are used to getting. Um, so it fits in a standard case of. Uh... It, it can fit in the standard. I don't think this is mini ITX. It's one of the slightly smaller, not nano ITX. Yeah. One of those kind of ITX series specifications. It will fit into those cases. Um, the things that interest me about it is that it's got uh, PCI, which. Um, you know, when I started the ARM server, uh, in the ARM server racket, I guess, um, you know, four or five years ago and, and started playing around with this stuff, people said, well, ARM's going to be all about, you know, SOCs, uh, people integrating IP devices. Um, why would you ever build a, you know, PCI? Why would you have all these different external devices? That's not what ARM servers are going to be about. But I think a lot of people kind of jump ahead of the industry. What the industry wants to begin with, or thinks it wants, more importantly, it's what the industry thinks it wants, 
um, are high-end servers that look a lot like what they know, where they can just take a PCI card that they already have. Um, one example we, we have, um, we work quite closely with uh, Mellanox. They have uh, some very nice 10 gigabit ethernet uh, hardware. And so if you don't want to use the, the gigabit interfaces on here, you can get a PCI card and put it in. One thing I think is going to be very interesting um, from a developer point of view is putting in the AMD Radeon uh, PCI graphics cards, which we've tested. And the cool thing is, um, even though this is not a desktop, it's not intended to be a desktop platform, for, uh, for around, you know, for the range of $500 to $1,000, not more, in that kind of window, um, you're going to be able to get one of these in a case, put uh, a, a nice graphics card in there, some decent memory, decent disk, all this stuff, kind of money you might spend on a, a desktop anyway, and you're going to be able to run uh, a, a Linux distribution of your choice on this system as a developer um, with a graphical desktop, with all these features. And I think that's going to be very interesting. So it won't just be people doing servers, but there will also be people who want to have a traditional PC style um, system that they can build with this now. That's very cool. So this is the ARM desktop. This is 64-bit, Yeah. octa-core. Uh, eight, eight core. You, you, could, you could certainly build GPU? a desktop. You could, certainly, you could certainly put any PCI uh, GPU on here. And in fact, the desktop team in Red Hat have started testing out different. It's kind of a fun thing, right? We do servers. We don't really yeah. do you know, ARM desktops. Um, I don't think that's the primary focus for this. But a lot of people here at Connect um, have been saying, gee, if I can buy this for hundreds of dollars, not thousands of dollars, and if I can put um, any graphics card I want in, and if I can run my GNOME desktop or my KDE desktop, or XFCE or whatever desktop I, I, I want as a Linux person, um, and if I can just run the same applications that I'm used to running, now I could be a developer at home, or I could be uh, a, a Linux uh, community developer who's not an ARM-focused developer. I could be Linus Torvalds. I could be, um, well, I wish, right? But, yeah. <laughs> but let's say that someone like Linus could say um, he wants to try building and testing ARM uh, builds of the kernel more more easily. He could even have one of these on his desk and you know run it as a desktop if he wanted to. And that's a cool thing. Once you can make this hardware available, both for people who want to build um, interesting servers um, and have a reference platform, and then also build their own desktop. And one more thing I would say about this platform that's particularly interesting is everything is open. The specifications open. Okay, no chip vendor is going to publish uh, you know the schematics for how to build their processor. Okay, so some of the hardware is you know kind of kind of standard for the industry, but the firmware is open. Um, all of the reference software is open. So what you can do as a software or even firmware developer is you can download um, everything that goes into the system and you can hack on it and you can understand it. And what we're going to do in Lenora that I think is really cool is we're going to work on new technologies. We're going to provide reference software um, and reference firmware that runs on boards like this. Um, and this is the first one, and, and I love AMD and they're great, um, but there are many other companies out there building interesting ARM devices, and there will be many, many more like this over the next year or two. So I've been hearing, and it sounds like, and it looks like, that uh, the ARM server is going to explode. Uh, I think so. I think that the, uh, the thing with ARM servers is you have to make the hardware available. Um, the biggest issue we've had is um, we've got some great operating system support out there now. We've got some great applications. I've been demoing at this event Apache Spark, okay, doing real-time uh, Twitter streaming analytics, right? So it just works. You can take it upstream, Apache Spark release. It's the next thing after Hadoop. Everyone's kind of really into Apache Spark now. Um, there'll probably be something even more shiny next year, right? But you can take it, it's a Java app, it just works, it works really well, you can build a cluster. I've done all these things, but that's because I've got hardware. And the biggest problem is getting hardware to um, developers. So now if you have um, inexpensive reference platforms that show people how to do it the right way, and they can get those, and they can port their software, and they can do their development, and they can test things out, that's gonna help with the ecosystem, uh, and then as the ecosystem builds, you're going to see more you know, mainstream hardware vendors selling uh, systems um, you know, with, with chips like this one in there. So we're very close to all the Linar engineers being able to have ARM part desktops and laptops maybe. And, yeah. and uh, <coughs> who knows, maybe uh, uh, Alibaba or Amazon or, exactly. or somebody mm -hmm. just like starts building whole server, server parks, so just I ARM saw, part. So I saw a really interesting demo here um, this week. I saw 
um, the guys from the CentOS community were here actually showing uh, Zen uh, and Scent running on ARM. Okay, we also have you know great support for KVM. We have uh, you know Red Hat's working on it, its own commercial stuff. But just as a community example, um, what they had there uh, was uh, Scent running on Zen. Now a lot of these uh, public clouds that you mentioned there, you know that they they run on a mixture of hypervisors, both Zen and KVM. Great support there. OpenStack's running great on these things. So if I am one of those public clouds, there's really nothing to stop me from saying, let me go and deploy something, except availability of hardware. So as we see more systems like this, it'll help with development, and then it will help uh, with the definition of you know, open compute compatible server platforms um, and mainstream tier one OEMs building you know, very large systems that these um, cloud vendors can roll out. Because they are uh, probably planning out to build a bunch of server parks, yep. and they have to consider very, very strongly to jump on the arm. On the arm, arm. Band, yeah. And is it ready? It's ready. It's, it's ready. ready. I think if you wanted to build, I think it would be aggressive now, but it's not. Uh, you're not too early to the party. Okay. Two years time, you might be late to the party. Okay. Now is a really good time to go and you know build a 10,000 node cluster. If you're someone like one of those public cloud companies, 10,000 systems is a small number, right? So go, go build a room full of racks, work with one of these vendors, build, uh, you know, work with software partners. You don't have to work with me, I'd love to work with you, um, but, uh, but, but work with some of us in the industry um, and go and build some of these systems. Um, and let's see where we can go. And let's see how much money they can save. That's absolutely power, true. Right? Absolutely true. Um, you know, and I, and I, I, I look forward to the, uh, the opportunity to, to, to build some of these things.